So Zego Cloud comes with an in-app chat kit, which is a collection of user interface components that are built on top of the in-app chat SDK. These components include features like the chat list, the one-on-one -on -one messaging, and the group chat. And by utilizing the in-app chat kit, you can easily create customized instant messaging applications that meet the specific needs of what your business. So with the features of the in-app chat kit, you can create one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats or join a group chat. You can also chat with others through one-on-one -on -one or group messages and send text messages as well, right? And it's supported on Android, iOS, Web, React Native, and Flutter, right? So today's tutorial, we'll be focusing on Flutter. So here's the recommended guide to integrate the SDK, right? So you need to choose that to follow the steps. So with the prerequisites, you need to go to the Zego Cloud Admin Console and do the following. Create a project and get an app ID and the app sign of the project. And the second step is to subscribe to the in-app chat service, right? So you need to activate that. So let's head towards the Zego Cloud Admin Console and create a project. So you can have access to the app ID and the app sign. So you can see I've already created some couple of projects in here. I'm having a tutorial on that, so I'll link it down in the description below. The video conference, the live audio room, the video and voice, and also the live stream app. So you need to create a project for your in-app chat. So you need to create a project. You need to select a use case for our app. So I will choose the in-app chat in here. So once you have that chosen, you need to click on the next button. So in here, you proceed to give your project a name. And I'm going to give it a name of in-app chat, right? With an underscore, that's the correct semantic. And, co and click on the continue button. So to start creating your in-app chat project. So once you have your project created, you need to start building your app, right? So you can see our project is created. So you can choose the in-app chat project which is created. So in here, you have access to our app ID and also the app sign of the project. So the second step is to activate the in-app chat, right? So choose the project, the in-app chat project with the service management tab click on that you can have access to the in-app chat in here you need to click on the in-app chat and also activate so click on that activate button ready to activate there you go you can see our in-app chat is being activated right so you can start So we have our project created and also with the in-app chat service being activated, right? So the next step is to add the Zego Zim kit as a dependency to our Flutter app. So I'll just copy that and within my Flutter project, I'll open the terminal and just paste in the link. So Flutter app add Zego Zim kit. So we add that as a dependency to our app. So once you have a successful installation, when you check the passpec.yml file, that's where you get to see our installed dependencies. You can see it over there. So the next step is to initialize the Zem kit before running our app. So within our main function, we should call the fun, um, method zemk.net and pass in our app ID and also the app sign of the project. So within our main function, so before running the app, we need to initialize our Zem kit. So we call it zemkit.init. So when you hover on the init, you need to import that as well. So when you hover it, you can see it requires the app ID and also the app sign. So we need to provide that information. So within the init, 
can provide it an app id and also the app sign so this can be accessed from the admin console zigo cloud admin console the project the project is just created so i just copy the app id and just paste it in here i'll just grab my app sign also in here i'll copy that and also place in the app sign so actually you need to call the zim kit as a function so once we have that initialized we need to connect our user passing in the id and also the name and navigate to the home page so i'll create a file that will authenticate the user before navigating to the home page and it's going to be the login so basically you assess the id and also the name from the user and navigate to the home page so within the project within the lib folder i'll create a file and i'm going to name that file as login.dat so i won't bore you with that much information so i'll just paste in the code in here explaining it to you so basically i'll just created it this folder just does the login page and accept the user id and also the username controller so within the code we are having the two test field and also the button the first one is assessing the id and the second one assessing the username and the button so once the button is pressed you are going to connect the user passing in the user id and also the username and navigating it to the home page so that's basically what the login page does so within the main of that file we actually need to replace the home page with the login page before navigating the user so within the main of that file i'll be doing that i'll replace my home page with the login page and just import that one there we go we can save in the changes so within the login page once we, we've authenticated the user we can now navigate to the home page so we are now on the home page so let's implement that so i'll just replace this home page within our home page so i'll just grab that in here and also within our code i'll just replace the home page with that code changing in the name of the stateless widget so i'll change it it to my home page there we go and we also need to import the zemkit conversation list view and also the zemkit message list page right to get rid of the errors and the actions of the app bar contain a custom widget known as the home page pop-up menu button which is not yet created so i'll be creating it sooner so let's proceed so within the lib folder i'll create a file and i'm going to name the file as pop-up menu button now it's going to contain our action so i'll just grab paste in this code i will explain it so basically the pop-up menu is just a state for widget that we are assessing the user id the group name the group user controller and also the group id and we are returning the menu button right which takes in the item builder and the item builder takes in the context we are returning the pop-up um menu item so in this situation we create three pop-up menu items passing different value right so the first one is going to be a new chart that's going to be one-on-one -on -one. and the next one is going to be a group chart right and the third one is going to be the join group that's when you want to join the group so once that is pressed you are going to show the default new peer chat dialog that's when you're chatting personal and the next one is going to show the default new group that's when you decide to create a group and the last one is going to show the default join um group so that's basically what the proper main button does so you need to import that so i'll just import that in here and saving the changes there we go so let's visit our documentation and see so we also need to make some configuration within our android project so first of all we need to set the compile sdk version to 33 and also the main sdk version to 21 and it's found within the same file within the app the source you have the build.gradle so within your project move into the android folder the app folder you have the build.gradle 
so we need to make some modification in here we need to change the compiled azk version to 33 so we just get rid of this and replace it with 33 and we also need to set the main sdk to 21 so i just get rid of that and also set it to 21 and just saving the changes there we go so with the documentation we also need to add permissions to our app right so i'll just grab the permissions in here and it should be found within the android manifest.xml so i'll just copy that so within your project within your projects move on to the android folder the app folder the source folder then move on further into the main folder we have the android manifest.xml so in here you pass in the permissions and just saving the changes there you go so that's basically it And also, we need to create a pro guard rules dot pro with within the hundred. So that's the next step. So the file name is going to be pro guard rules dot pro. So within your project, within the hundred folder, the app, you right click and create a file, and that file is going to be the pro guard rules dot pro. That's going to be the name. And just placing below the contents we are given. So within the documentations, we need to copy the content and just paste it within the pro guard rules dot pro. So once we have that, saving the changes. The next step is also to add the below the code to the release part of your board gradle. Right? So we just grab the code in here just grab the code in here and we need to move into the build.gradle to the release part we need to add the following code so we can see the build.gradle the release below it you need to paste in the code we just copied and save any changes so i think that's basically it for configuration of the ios to add permissions we need to move into the ios folder the runner folder we have the info.plist and it add the following code to the date part right so info the playlist to the date part we add the following code and just saving the changes so that's basically it you can just run in tesla app so let's give it a try So as you can see when we run the app you can see our login page being written here and we are supposed to enter our user id and also the username before you can log in so i'll go with just a random user id one two three four and also the username right and click on the login button so you'll be navigated to the home page so the actions of this app bar is where you can specify it being a new chat a new group or you've been joining a new group so if you want to create a new group there will be a pop-up for you to passing the um, group name the ID and also the user ID want to, to join so you can see it's created over here right so that's the chatting feature you can just chat over here so that's basically it if you find it to be useful interesting consider subscribing like and share the video as well see you in our next tutorial until then stay tuned